on a windy November afternoon. We bid you greetings from Spec Martin Stadium as we are set to finish off the 2023 season. And two teams going in complete opposite directions as the Stetson Hatters who take, take the field will take on the Cole PFL leaders, the Davidson Wildcats. Victor Anderson, glad that you're with us on this Saturday afternoon. It is Military Appreciation Day. Stetson wearing the customary S with the U.S. flag emblem intertwined. Davidson wearing the red tops with the white uniforms and the red pants. Davidson will be without their all-conference center. Gilbert DeGlau got injured last week in their win versus Date versus Presbyterian. So it'll be Barclay Briggs, the 6'1 senior, who will get the start for Davidson this afternoon. Davidson 6-2, winners of six straight. And coming with the number one rushing offense in the nation. But the offense will have to wait to take the field as Stetson won the toss, and Stetson will receive a changeup for Hatter head coach Brian Young. So the Davidson defense will be out on the field first. This marks the 13th meeting all time between the Marks the 15th meeting all time between these two programs. Davidson with the 8-6 lead. They have won four in a row over the Hatters, including a barn burner last year at Richardson Stadium. 56-48 won by the Wildcats in double overtime. A game in which saw Brady Mites throw for 398 yards and six touchdowns. But a lot of those playmakers who got the got the rock from Mites last year not available today. So again, Davidson will be on defense as Stetson won the toss and elected to receive. The reigning PFL special teams player of the week, freshman Adam Zugali will Kick off for Davison. Set to return will be Jalen Worthen Carr. Along with Jalen Johnson. Davidson five and two versus Stetson in the land. Now of course we reference them winning four straight meetings over the Hatters. Balls up on the tee, and off we go on this November Saturday. Johnson lets it bounce into the end zone for a touchback, and Stetson will start off the game at their own 25-yard line. And it will be Brady Mites to get the start for Stetson. Mice coming into today's game. A little bit back and forth between him and Matt O'Connor in terms of the starting responsibilities. But again, it'll be Mice to get the start today for head coach Brian Young. Donovan Shep, it'll be Devin Brewer who missed last week's game in the backfield. A little jet sweep motion to Ronald Johnson. Flag on a play, gets bumped out of bounds at the 35 yard line, but that appears it will come back. As there was some holding on the far side of that jet sweep action. A correction, an illegal formation, five men in the backfield. We've seen that called a lot, both in college and the NFL, those linemen those offensive tackles with those wide stances, those feet get a little bit too out, a little bit too far back and they end up being in the backfield. So it'll be first and 15, negate the first down run for the Hatters. Again, Devon Brewer in the backfield, missed last week's game versus Drake. Stetson got blown out by the cold PFL leaders, 33-7. Brewer, a little swing screen. Brewer makes a man miss. 
pushed out at the 25 yard line. Actually, it's Matt O'Connor who's getting the start. O'Connor, 86 of 152 this year, just over 1,100 yards, four touchdowns, four interceptions this year. So Stetson offense that has sputtered in moments this year. Second down, hands out to Andre Feliciano. He gets racked all down back to the 23-yard line. Julian Rollins from his defensive end position. He's third on the team in tackles. They have very athletic ends. Does Davidson or Rollins and Jonathan Hammond. So it's third down and 16. they will mark it at the 19-yard line. Adders this year struggled on third down. 38% on third down conversions. Davidson on the opposite end. One of the stingiest teams on third downs. Only allowing 28% conversions. Third best in the FCS. Hatters need to get to the 35. O'Connor, flush, throws over the middle. That one is incomplete. Was trying to go to Caleb Cosner. Actually trying to go to Jalen Worthen Carr. So the jet sweep for the first down gets negated by the illegal formation. And the Wildcats force the three and out. And will set up their offense with prime field position. Marshall Golick will have his heels planted at the five. Aaron Myone set to receive for Davidson. Golick gets it away. Myone will make the catch, receive it at the 43 yard line. Tries to come up field. Spins, gets wrestled down, but ends up in Stetson territory at the 47 yard line. And that's where the Wildcats will have their first possession this afternoon. Davidson, one of the best offenses in the SCS. Scott A. Bell in his sixth season at the helm picked up his 40th career win last week as Davidson retained possession of the 1919 Cup with a 45-28 win over Presbyterian. Score wasn't really indicative of how dominant the Wildcats were. Of course, they're Carolina rivals. Colter Cleland hands it off. Mari Adams, he gets wrestled down, but again a flag on the first play offensively. And I'll call off sides on Stetson, so it'll be a free five yards for the Wildcats. Davidson, number one in the nation in scoring offense, averaging 43 and a half points per game. But in the six game winning streak, Davidson has averaged 52 points per game. Davidson, like to spread things out, but he still run that, tradi that customary option offense. Again, hand off to Adams. Has a wide open space to the 20, to the 15, to the 10, to the 5. Mari Adams first play, 42 yards, no flags, touchdown Davidson. The one thing Hatters were going to be concerned about is that ability to stop the run up the middle. Barclay Briggs starting in place of Gilbert DeGlau makes a key block. Adams finds the seam, busts up the middle, 42 yards, and the Wildcats just like that on the board, six to nothing. Adams Ugai with the extra point. Splits up, right in, it is good. They get the free five yards off the offside, and then Mari Adams goes the remaining 42. And that Wildcats, two minutes, 28 seconds in, with a 7-0 lead. Again, this Davidson offense, one of the most potent in college football this year. Lead the nation in scoring offense as well as yards, as well as total offense. And the scoring offense are number one. They rush for over 300 yards per game. And they got 42 yards off that Mari Adams rush. 
Stetson's woes on the Russian defensive side have been well documented. And not off to the start that they want here today. Hatters go three and out. Wildcats get the ball in Stetson territory. They go one play, 42 yards. As Mari Adams with his 11th touchdown in the last five games, 13 on, 13th on the season, which leads to PFL. Wind blows the ball off the tee. So Zugai will have to re-tee and set things up. Seven nothing Davidson. 12.32 left in the first quarter. Those of you just joining us, Laymar Adams with the 42 yard touchdown scamper on a Wildcats first offensive play. After holding Stetson to a three and out. And a ball blows off the tee again. So Zugahi will need a little assistance. Tahir Henry to kick off to Stetson. Now with the ball properly placed and assisted, Suagi, excuse me, will kick it away. Suagi, the freshman, a beautiful end over and kick. Feel it by Jalen Johnson, left foot out of the end zone when he receives it. Johnson has his team to the 25, leaps over a man who'll get wrestled down at the 32 yard line. A touchdown saving tackle. That's Trist, that's Daniel Carter on the special team's tackle. So Seto will have the ball first and 10. The market at the 32 yard line. So here's Matt O'Connor again in the Stetson offense. Hatters had a nice jet sweep on, a, on their opening play. Got a race by an illegal formation, five in the backfield. And the Hatters went backwards on that opening drive after that. Again, another, another screen to the Running back Devin Brewer gets shoved out of bounds by a host of Wildcats. We'll give him a gain of one to the 33. Again, Julian Rollins, the athletic D end from Huntersville, North Carolina on the play. Second down and nine. O'Connor will have two to his left, two to his right, one to the left. Makes the handoff to Brewer. Throw it back screen, has Brewer wide open, makes the catch. Stays in bounce, levels the hit to the 25, 20, 15. He finally gets knocked down at the 10 yard line. Oh my goodness, Devin Brewer, welcome back, sir. He laid the lumber. First and goal, Stetson. My goodness, what a run after the catch by Devin Brewer. Gain of 57, first and goal for Stetson. Sebastian Christian, the freshman in the backfield. Receivers east side. Christian hands it off, gets the handoff. Gets bullied forward two to seven. Second and goal for the Hatters. Julian Rollins once again in the middle of the pile. Stetson this year, 79% scoring in the red zone. 19 of 29, converting those red zone attempts into touchdowns. O'Connor with an empty backfield. Caleb Coster, the wing to the right. Worthen Carr gets the handoff on the jet sweep. Works outside. Gets a nice block, but will only get a gain of two to the five yard line. Nice job by Carter, just keeping that edge. Daniel Carter, the leading tackler for Davidson. 52 tackles coming into today. Third and goal from the five. Can the Hatters take advantage after the big pass play to Devin Brewer? Costner in motion, O'Connor rolls right. 
Has a man open in the end zone. Jalen Worthen Carr. Touchdown, Stetson. A beautiful concept by Norman Joseph. Get Costner in motion. Use him as a blocker. Seal off that outside edge in the rush of Roberts. O'Connor rolls left. Little, some say pick route, some say a rub route, depending on your preference. Whirling car, end zone, touchdown Hatters, and an extra point away from tying it up. And the extra point is up and it is good. Brandon Bush with the extra point. Up and good, so the Hatters respond with the of a long touchdown drive of their own. The big play, the 56-yard pitch and catch from O'Connor to Devin Brewer, who laid the lumber on a man in the process. And then O'Connor, the five-yard touchdown strike to Jalen Worthen Carr. A surprising start on this Saturday afternoon. 10.04 left to go, opening quarter. Davidson and Stetson tied at seven apiece. Davidson and Drake the lone undefeated teams in the PFL, both at 5-0. They will not play each other in the regular season. Davis Drake beats Stetson last week, 33-7. So Drake will root for the Hatters today and hope that they can pull off a stunner versus the three-time PFL representative in the FCS playoffs. Brandon Bush set to kick. Amari Hill will turn for Davidson. Gets it for hash, bobbles it, picks it up at the 15-yard line. Might be a benefit to him. He gets wrestled down at the 25-yard line. A nice open field tackle by Stetson. Now there's a flag down on the Stet on the Davidson sideline at the 36 yard line. Cade Blackburn on the tackle. Let's see what the flag is though. So Landon Smart called for an illegal block below the waist on the return. So it's half the distance to the go half the distance from the foul. So it'll be first down for Davidson. Ball is placed at the 12. Second possession for Coulter Cleveland. The leading touchdown passer in the PFL 14 this year, only two interceptions. Has Mason Sharon to his right. Sharon gets the handoff. Runs right into a brick wall in the form of Andrew Thompson. He gets thrown back for a gain of three. Mason Sharon, 6'2", 220 pound, back from Leo, Indiana. It's, it's a very unique way they run this spread offense, this option offense for Scott Abel. They don't run into the with the, with, like the wings, with the wing backs, although they'll have the wing back concept here. Cleveland keeps it, gets a, had a block, but gets held up by Rassi Littlejohn, the all PFL defender. So Cleland, I'll say a gain of two, and this is where Stetson has to take advantage of these situations. Third down and five for Davidson. Davidson. Tops in the PFL, converting third downs. They do so at a 43.4% clip. Need to get to the 22, third and seven. A little trickeration end around. Mark McCurdy, who had a big game last year versus Stetson, gets brought down at the 24 yard line, well beyond the line of the game. First down, Davidson. McCurdy. Tremendous all-purpose back out of that slot position. 117 yards rushing, 246 yards receiving for the senior from Park City, Utah. First and 10, Davidson. 
Cleland throws it over to Sala. That's a man wide open. That's Aaron Mayon with the catch. Gets shoved out of bounds at the 40. Seven yard line, another Davidson first down. This is what makes Davidson so dangerous. That play action, that, that play action offense. You can't be too worried about that option because it can beat you deep. Flags on the play. There were two Wildcats in motion. Scott A. Bell is not too happy about that. I can hear Coach all the way up here from where we are. He said, look at your partner. And again, when you run, uh, when you run such an intricate offense, when you're going to have men in motion, men shifting, you have to know, remember where you are. And that's what Coach was, uh, in none too pleasant terms, uh, teaching his young men. So the Kelly makes it first and 15 at the 42-yard line. 7.35 left to go first quarter, tied up at 7-all. Second Davidson possession. Mari Adams went 42 yards in that first offensive play. Hand off to Sharon. Sharon pulls his way into Stetson territory at the 49-yard line. Mason Sharon, second behind his teammate and in the PFL in rushing touchdowns. Really picked up his rushing the last four games. Averaging 106 yards per game, having 104.5 yards per game in the last four, including 139, the season best versus Presbyterian. Gets a handoff again. Breaks to almost a, almost had green grass in front of him, but got pulled down by the ankles by Nicholas LaRue. The middle of that 3-3-5 Stetson defense. So a first down for Davidson and had a territory at the 40. McCurdy to slap back hole, lined up off to the right. My own in motion, a fake here over to Sharon, over the middle, a wide open tight end. Christian Berry brought down by Rassi Littlejohn, but he gets into the Davidson red zone at the 13 yard line. Three big plays, three first downs for the Wildcats. And just like the reference, one of the top offenses in the nation. Cleveland really clapping, want to pick up that tempo. Hands off to Sharon. Swallowed by a sea of green at the 11, gain of two. Davidson, the last six years, the top red zone offense in the PFL, one of the tops in the nation, and this year, no exception. 89% 89% in the red zone, and Scott Abel is going to call a timeout again. To some confusion with the alignment for the second and eight. So Davidson forced to burn a timeout. 5.43 left in his first quarter. Wildcats driving right now. This will be the 10th play of the drive coming up when we resume play. Davidson comes in without the services of Gilbert DeGlau. Started every game last year. Got nicked up last week versus Presbyterian. Didn't make the trip to the land this week. So Barclay Briggs will get this, got to start at center. He'll be joining the offensive line on the left side. Beck Kipperman, second team all league last year. Left tackle, Malik McDaniel, left guard. On the right side, Kyler Herring, the right guard, and Aaron Hopkins, 6'5", 280, senior at right tackle. And they will switch their alignment around. Sharon, busts his way through, goes backwards, gets pushed forward. They'll say he stopped at the one yard line. So a first and goal off the run for Mason Sharon. Gain of 10, first and goal at the one. Got to be wary of the fate to Sharon, although the way that right side has been bullying Stetson, he may get it here. He does, shoves off the man, puts his nose in the end zone, touchdown Davidson. So Davidson flexes their offensive muscle and Mason Sharon 
punches home the final 12 yards. And Davidson regains superiority versus Stetson. Suagi with the extra point. Suagi remains perfect on PATs, 45 for 45. Three possessions, three touchdowns. Two of them from the visitors from Davidson, North Carolina. And head coach Brian Young having a talk with Rassie Littlejohn and the rest of the Stetson defense. 5-11 left to go here in this first quarter. Your new score, Davidson 14 and Stetson 7. Last drive, 11 plays, 88 yards. Took four minutes and 44 seconds off the clock, capped off by the Mason Sharon. One yard touchdown run. Now, as much as we talked about Stetson, we're supposed to talk about Stetson's run defense being an issue. Davidson's passing defense has been a bit questionable this year. See if Matt O'Connor can, offensive coordinator Norman Powell can cap, Norman Joseph can capitalize. Had a big pass play to Devin Brewer in the opening possession to set up the touchdown strike five yards to Jalen Worthen Carr. Zuwagi to kick. Rolling Carr and Jalen Johnson back to return for Stetson. Oh, angle that one, and Johnson will feel it at the two. Johnson stays on his feet, falls forward to the 22-yard line, and that's where Stetson will have their third possession of the afternoon. Stetson went three and out in their opening possession before Driving down the field on a five-play, 68-yard drive that took 218 off the clock. And Matt O'Connor will bring the Hatter offense on the field. 505 left to go first quarter. First and 10 of the Stetson 22. Hatters will condense the formation. Two receivers to the right along with the lone tight end. Again, it's green to Brewer. Brewer gets a block. Gets tripped up at the 31, they say the 32 yard line. They're gonna mark him. No, mark him just short. That's, mark him just short. No, it actually would say give him a first down. Are they giving him a first down? There's some confusion with the chains. It appears that he will give him a first down. So Brewer with the 10-yard reception, first down, 32. Brewer tries to hand it off. He gets wrestled down. Fortunate didn't get called for a flag for a face max. Dixon, Dixon Hudson on the tackle. Hudson, freshman from Frisco, Texas. Gets the TFL, will be second and 12 at the 30. As we are at the four minute mark, first quarter, Victor Anderson with you. Stetson down 14 7. O'Connor, flush and finished at the 20 yard line. Jonathan Hammond, the defensive freshman of the year in the PFL back in 2020 21. Picks up the sack. He's already in the top three all time in Davis in history in sacks. Adds to the tally there. Brings up third down and 20. Hatters need to get to the 42 yard line. Again, a promising start to a drive could be negated as the Hatters have gone backwards since the Devin Brewer 10 yard reception on first down. O'Connor, empty backfield tunnel screen, finds a man. It is Cuts up field and, is, and steps out of bounds as Ronell Johnson. He'll get eight yards back, but will still be well short of the first. So it'll be fourth and 12 and another win for the Davidson defense. Mark 
Marshall Goldick will line up to punt. Aaron Myone back at the 34-yard line. And creeps up to the 35. Davidson looks like they might bring pressure on the, out, on the outside towards their sideline. Golick does get it away. Ball will take a semi-Stetson roll and ends up at the Davidson 45-yard line. So back on the field goes Coulter Cleland and the Davidson offense. Davidson, two plays, 47 yards on a 40 and a 42-yard touchdown run by Mari Adams at their opening possession. And then with 11 plays, 88 yards, which ended with the Mason Sharon one-yard touchdown punish. First down. It's Adams with the carry. And Adams will gets stood up at the 48-yard line, not before he picks up a gain of four. Ezekiel Romero credited with the tackle, second and six, as we are under two minutes left in this opening quarter. A little pop pass into McCurdy. McCurdy. Six his head in the dirt and will get rewarded with the first down and had her territory to the 46. Davidson has scored on their first two possessions. Again, that Wildcats, the number one scoring offense in all of FCS, averaging four, three and a half points per game. And on pace right now, play action. Cleveland has time, has his tight end over the middle. That one is caught by Langston Green, the number 87. Green with the reception, first down, Davidson. Green, has, oh, that's his first reception of the season. It comes at a huge time. Adams, off right side. Gets met up front by Fernando O'Brien, number 22, who was in on the tackle, brings up second down. Second and second and two at the 19. He's got 35 seconds of running in his first quarter. Davidson will have time for one more play. Sam Ballard comes in the game, the junior from Monticello, Minnesota. Cordy in motion, hands off Valor. Valor off left, left guard. Plows his way through inside the 15 to the 10. And Davidson will have first and goal when we get right, when we go into the second quarter. Davidson trying to get one more snap off and will not do so. So the first quarter went the way that Davidson wanted it to go, but Stetson shows some life of their own. The Wildcats knocking on the door, and in the first 15 minutes, it's Speck Martin Stadiums, Davidson 14, and Stetson 7. Victor Anderson, glad that you're with us here on Hattavision. Next to last home game for Stetson in the regular season. Our final home contest will take up, will be against San Diego on November 18th. That'll be a 12 noon kickoff here at Spec Martin Stadium. Before that, David, before that, Stetson will make the trip to Indiana to take on Valparaiso next Saturday, Veterans Day. Davidson, in the meanwhile, will Finish their road portion of the schedule next weekend versus Moorhead State as Coach Scott Abel still having a conversation with the officials. Coach Abel has been very vocal with the uh, men in the stripes during the first 15 minutes. It's 
stats for the first quarter, as you anticipate, dominated by Davidson. Davidson, 16 plays, 181 yards. Stetson, 12 plays, 75 yards. Davidson outrushing Stetson, 112 to negative nine. Davidson, again, the number one rushing offense in FCS, 301 yards per game on the ground. Stetson, statistically one of the worst teams in terms of rushing offense, rushing defense this year. It'll be first and goal, Davidson at the 10. Sam Valor will be in the backfield. Trey Messer, the slot back to his left, comes in motion behind Cleland. Cleland, option. Messer cuts inside. Wrestled down by a slew of hatters, including Jalen Johnson at the two. Second and goal for Davidson. Heavy action on the left side. They'll hand off again. He gets stood up. They will say his four progress was stopped at the one yard line. CJ. C.J. Davis, who spent an early portion of the season in the starting lineup on the tackle, so it's third and goal from the one. Third and goal. They're going to spread things out just a little bit. Messer in motion. Fowler dies, and he's in there. Touchdown, Davison. Only fitting that Sam with the S on the chest, a la Superman, dives into the end zone for the Davidson score. Second touchdown on the year for the junior. And Davidson is now three for three, turning possessions into touchdowns. Adam Zuagi bangs home the extra point. 62 seconds into his second quarter. And Davidson extends their lead 21 to seven. Again, a dominant drive. Davidson's offensive line without the services of Gilbert DeGlau. Punches another one home. That drive for Davidson, eight plays, 56 yards, took three minutes and 32 seconds off the clock. Three different backs have scored for Davidson. Mari Adams scored on the second play from scrimmage, 42 yards. Mason Sharon banged one in from one yard out, and this now Sam Valor with the one yard touchdown plunge, with the one yard touchdown leap. Makes it 21-7. So Davidson halfway towards their playing production four per game this year. Stetson has to get something going offensively, otherwise this game could be well out of hand in a hurry. That's how Davidson Poured it on versus Presbyterian last week in the 1919 Cup as Johnson bobbles the kickoff, runs it to his own man, and gets swarmed back at the 12-yard line. Lands in Gleason on a tackle, but another flag down at the 22-yard line. We saw Davidson call for an illegal block when they had a kickoff and then start their previous possession. Similar person of foul, but a blindside block called on the Hatters. As Fernando Bryant whistled for the blindside block. And Stetson will have the ball at the six. So back goes Matt O'Connor and the Stetson offense. 
O'Connor today, 6 of 7, 84 yards, 56 on the one play to Devin Brewer. The back judge will come all the way out to call the play dead. Maybe they had to replace the ball in terms of the positioning of the flag. The flag was placed at the 22-yard line. Don't see anything. I think that's what's, what's happening here. They had to place the, they illegally placed the ball at the six. Oh. So the blind side block was against Davidson. So because of that, it's 15 yards for Stetson. So they'll place the ball at the 32-yard line. That's what the official was discussing, and Costco Debo continues his frustration towards the gentleman in the black and white stripes. So it's first and 10 at the 27-yard line for Stetson. O'Connor will have Brewer to his right. Hatters again with a condensed formation, two receivers to the right. Play action. O'Connor wants it long, has a man open as Ronell Johnson gets knocked down and still makes the catch at the 29-yard line. Ronell Johnson, the freshman, was covered tightly by Anthony Njaku, who's getting the start at corner today for TJ Maggie, who is not whip, who got, who is not here. It was a scratch. So first and 10, again, the deep passing game, serving Matt O'Connor and Stetson well. Brewer gets man in the backfield and will get wrestled down, but it'll, but it'll by the horse collar by Cameron Willis. So give a 15, so give a free 15 and an automatic first on the horse collar tackle by Willis potentially. The officials are marking the ball forward. So it's not a horse collar, it was a face mask calling on Willis. So 15 yards. And this is a Davidson team that comes into today's game. One of the fewest penalized teams in the nation. And they've already been whistled for three penalties today. Brewer to the 12. He's up second down and second down and eight. 21-7 Davidson. 12.45 left to go in his first half. Stetson showing some life offensively. Held to seven points in their loss last week to Drake. Brewer did not play in that game versus the Bulldogs. And if you saw and heard the game, you can tell the Hatters were slugging through molasses without him in the lineup. A little jet sweep, nice block. Jalen Worthen Carr pushes his way through to the five. That's nice blocks by Caleb Costner and Brewer. I should know Mark about the four. And it'll bring up first and goal. Elijah Workinger will come on for Costner, will come on for Worthen Carr. So we'll have both Costner and Workinger on the left side of the formation. Gabe Aiken, the slot receiver to the right, along with Vernell Johnson. First and goal. Little trickeration to Johnson. Wanted to throw it. But Cameron Willis says, you can't whistle me on that one. He sniffed out that end around from the opening, opening movement from Johnson. Loss of 10, OB, loss of nine. Second and goal from the 13. So again, when Stetson has a positive play, they have a Subsequent play knocked them back, whether it be a penalty or sack, or in this case, a loss of nine on the reverse. 
O'Connor on second and goal. Has Gabe Aiken. He goes through three tackles into the end zone. Touchdown, Sesson. Gabe Aiken, the sophomore transfer from Texas State, finds Pater for the fourth time this season, and the Hatters cut the lead down 21 13. This sets an offense is playing with confidence that we have not seen since the first two games of the 2023 season. O'Connor with another touchdown drive. Extra point upcoming for Brandon Bush, but it rains flags all over before we are able to do so. Pointing game usually happens. We have to call that the Spider-Man meme when one person points at the other. So a whistle called on Darren Kendall's the junior who are on special teams. So they'll move the ball a half a yard to the one and a half yard line. Setson will still elect to go for the one at one point after conversion with Brandon Bush. Bush, also perfect on PATs this year. He is seven for seven. So Brandon Bush makes it a 21-14 game with 10.58 left to go here in the first half. Victor Anderson with you and what has been a surprisingly high-scoring affair. Stetson's offense finding some energy in the passing game. And a pair of touchdown passes from Matt O'Connor, one to Jalen Worthen Carr, the other to Gabe Aiken. Has the Hatters down 21-14, but can they find a way to stop this seemingly unstoppable Davidson offensive attack. The Wildcats have had the ball three times and have scored all three times with three different running backs punching pay dirt. Davidson averaging 10 yards per play. 122 of their 191 yards have been on the ground. Bush will kick. Mario Hill set to return to kick alongside. I was bobbled and fielded at the two yard line. And that ends up being a nice return for Davidson. As Landon Yard line, good return by Davidson. That's Kellen West on the return. So what nearly turned what was nearly disastrous on the Marshall goalie kickoff gives Davidson solid field position. First down at the third market at the 32 yard line. And Coulter Cleland and his Davidson offense will go to work on their fourth possession. My own in motion, hand on to Mason Sherrod. Runs off the right side, loses the football, and Stetson has it. Ball got ripped out of his hands, appeared to be Andrew Martin, who ripped the ball out of the hands of the bulky sophomore, and Stetson recovers. And Stetson will have their first turnover of the day. Davion Maxwell, we we'll get the championship belt and the Stetson to go along with it. This is a Davidson offense that has valued the football all season long. Going into today's game, Davidson had only lost one fumble all season, had only lost one fumble all season long and had three turnovers total. What a time for Stetson to force a turnover here 
Maxwell with the recovery. Hatters with the ball at the Davison 42 yard line, first and 10. O'Connor will have working Gersey tied end to his right. Fakes the jet sweep, runs it to his lineman, and gets stood up, gets a gain of two to the 40 yard line. Ran right in the back of Connell Walsh, the freshman playing right tackle, number 77. Second and eight. Andre Feliciano at the bottom of your screen. Gabe Bacon at the top in the middle too. Line up in the slot to the left is Worthen Carr. Caught the Catters first touchdown this afternoon. Second and eight. O'Connor flushed, overthrows his man and almost got picked off. John Tessman. Got, a, got the right hand on it. He was trying to go to Feliciano. So it's third and eight. Davidson looking to hold strong after that sudden change off the Mason Sherrod, off the Mason Sharon fumble. Hatters today on third down. One of three. Need to get to the Davison 32. No flag. Has a man open as Feliciano gets knocked down to the 25 yard line. By Saban McLaughlin, it'll be a Stetson first down. Nice job, nice drop by Feliciano. Ran a deep comeback towards the sideline and O'Connor hit him. Gain of 15, first down for the Hatters. This is a different Stetson offense that we've been seeing during the meat of this PFL season. First and 10 of the 25, O'Connor has a man over the middle. That's Caleb Costner. Has another Stetson first down to the 14 yard line. Costner's eighth reception of the season. Sat down in the middle, a little five yard little five yard turn and sit and has plenty of enough real estate to press forward in the first down for Stetson at the 14 yard line of the Davison red zone. O'Connor two to his left, one to the right. Has a corner route, had a man. Ball is gonna be incomplete, no flag. Trying to go to Shiloh Conway. So saving McLaughlin who Plays linebacker, but is agile enough to be a line, agile enough to be a DB. Listed at 5'11", 195. Had a fans not too happy about the what they perceive to be a non-call, and you could understand their grievance there. Second and ten. O'Connor, 10 to 12, 172 yards, two touchdowns. Has trips to his left. Now brings Worthen Carr in motion. And on the Worthen Carr gets a block from Brewer. Ends up out of bounds inside the 10. Oh, mark him at the eight. So it'll be third and four. Hatter's already converted a third down on his drive on a toss to Andre Feliciano. Sixth play of the Stetson drive started after a fumble recovery by Davion Maxwell. Hatters will get a free five yards. Those on the Feliciano. It'll be incomplete, but O'Connor draw Davison off sides, and the Hatters will get a free first down. Thanks to the surprisingly undisciplined Cameron Wells. Saw the head linesman and the referee having a conversation. It's gonna be it's gonna be off. So it's gonna be first and goal. Now it's gonna now the question is, is it So it'll be half the distance to the goal and it's Jonathan Hammond whistled for the early movement. So first and goal Stetson. They'll spot it at the four. So again, officials continuing their conversation. Direction. 
So, so, so it's half the distance, but because the yardage did not result in a first down, so it's going to be third and probably 13 inches. So third, so it's third down. Coach Brian Young not too happy and absolute confusion on the field. Ryan Young having a both head coaches none too happy about the uh, some of the uh, officiating that we've seen in this first 30 minutes. So it'll be third and less than one at the four. So the clock will start on the snap with the official stoppage. It's third and, they say third and one, but realistically it's third and probably again, less than a yard. Davidson has nine players within a half yard. Caleb Costa with the handoff, he'll get first and goal. They use Caleb Costa as the lead back. They found something using Costa Using him as a using him as a running back, picked up his first rushing touchdown earlier this year versus Montana State. So it'll be first and goal at the two. See if Norm Norman Joseph, first year offensive coordinator for Stetson, keeps with that same concept. Brewer in the backfield is a Wildcat quarterback. Well, it'll be some movement. You know, give Stetson potentially some more room on that first and goal. Isaiah Yibard, a redshirt freshman from Katy, Texas, whistled 40 early motion. So first and goal, it'll be at the six. 7.23 and running, second quarter. Davidson up 21-14. Victor Anderson with you for Spec Martin Stadium. Stetson got the ball after a Mason Sharon fumble recovered by Davion Maxwell. Hatters with first and goal. Trips to the left side. O'Connor looks that way. Had a man. All's incomplete through the hands of Charlie King. Ends up second and goal. Second and goal for Stetson. Brewer goes in motion to the left. O'Connor looks over the middle, has a slant route, had Ronell Johnson, but could not hang on with the slant route. Good coverage by Amari Hill. So brings up third and goal at the six. Hatters have converted twice on third downs on this drive. You need to make it a third to make it a one point game. O'Connor will have both Workinger and Caleb Costner on the right side, empty formation. Feliciano man's in motion to the left side. Has Feliciano open but overthrows his man. If he puts a little less air on it, Feliciano coasts his way into the end zone, but instead it is fourth and goal. And it'll bring on Brandon Bush and the field goal unit. Brandon Bush will line up for a 23 yard field goal. Wesley Choate will snap, bowl gains to hold to cut the lead down to four. Snap is low, kick is up, and the kick is good. 
So the Hatters cannot take advantage of first and goal at the two. Have to settle for a field goal. But nonetheless, the Hatters are showing some grit and fight against the cold PFL leaders. 6.49 left to go in this opening half. New score, Davidson 21 and Stetson 17. For Bush, that is his first career field goal. He missed his only other attempt on the season. Oh, missed his only other attempt on the season. That came from 34 yards out versus Marist. As we reference, he is perfect on extra points, seven for seven. So now Davidson playing a little bit on their heels after just the fourth turnover on the season on the Mason Sharon fumble as the wind is continuing to wreak havoc from our broadcast setup. Ball is fielded in the end zone, three yards deep. He'll get out to the 20 yard line before he gets Stood up, that's last on the return for Davidson. So first and 10 for Davidson. Fuller Cleland back on the field. It's only complete, only attempted three passes. Completed all three for 69 yards. We'll have Mari Adams, sidecar to the right. Mayo, Mayo in motion. Adams with the handoff. Tries to go on the right side. He gets swallowed up at 23. It's Bernardo Lewis on the tackle for Stetson. Brings up second down and seven. Second and seven. 618 and running second quarter. Stetson has fought valiantly so far. Adams again. Goes to the 27. This is where Davidson likes to be. That third and manageable. Third and it'll be third and a long two. Third and two for Davidson. Davidson two for two on third down. So late move from movement. See Charles Clarence Freeman the fourth pointing towards Jalen Johnson and Brian Young is saying some words that we cannot repeat on air. Yeah, both coaches are really uh, letting their feelings be known. Uh, it'll be a very, uh, this is one of those times where you don't want to be a fly in the locker room at halftime because if the coaches see you, they'll probably take some newspaper and sling it out of your direction. First down for Davidson at the 33. Cleveland has a man over the middle. That one is almost intercepted through the hands of Jalen Johnson. Tried to go to Clarence Freeman, the fourth. On a big pulse towards the numbers in front of Stetson's sideline. So second and 10 at the 33. 524 left in his first half. Davidson 21, Stetson 17. Hatters at first and goal inside the three, but a penalty pushed him back and they had to settle for a Brendan Bush 23 yard field goal. Mari Adams. The Stetson front line, which has been been a vocal point of their running woes, have held strong so far. Third down and seven. 
Aurelia Alexander, number five, in as the defensive end, along with Josh Hughes. Passing situation for Davidson. This is Stetson wants to do. Get Davidson in third and long and bring the house. They bring both Maxwell and Littlejohn. Adams bulls forward to the 41. Decision time for play caller Scott Abel. Fourth down. Fourth and they'll say three. Fourth down, I'll say two. Davidson has converted six, almost 70% of their fourth downs. Fourth down and two. High snap, Adams. He gets stopped. The officials are gonna mark him just short of the 43. The Stetson D-line holds. Coach Abel's pointing towards the first down. That's gonna be very close. It looked like his progress got stopped just before he got to the 43. The officials are going to, they're gonna ask for a measurement here. The Stetson defense already off the field celebrating. I don't know, it looks, I don't, they're not even gonna measure it. They placed the ball at the 42 yard line, which is well short of the yard of the line of game. So the Stetson defense holds once again as Scott Abo is furious at the umpire. Coach Abo is he's he needs to be careful. The, the officials have let him talk, talk and vent. He needs to be careful and they make it official first down. Scott Abel needs to be real careful. Doesn't want to cost this team another 15 yards. He's been chirping at the officials to, from the opening possession of the game. Some of it towards his players about the early flags. I give these officials credit. They are giving Davis's head coach a lot of leash. But have not thrown that yellow the yellow flag high in the air for the unsportsmanlike. So that's in again off the turnover. First down at the 42 yard line. O'Connor wants the home run ball. Goes to Ronald Johnson. Intercepted at the five yard line. Daniel Carter with his second interception of the season. Stetson rolled the dice and he come up with snake eyes. Davidson will have the ball back. First down at the six. Norman Joseph went for the home run. And Daniel Carter threw that ball in the double coverage. And now this is the this is an opportunity for Davidson to push things out. They got 4.03 left to go in the first half, and they get the ball to start the third quarter because Davis, because Stetson won the toss and elected to receive the opening kickoff. First down at the six. Mason Sharon has to field. He has room to the 35, to the 45. Mason Sharon down the sideline, 94 yards, no flags. Touchdown, Davidson. What an answer for the Wildcats. Mason Sharon, 94 yards, goes untouched. Touchdown, Davidson. A backbreaker for the Hatters. They get the turnover on downs. They throw the interception and on the very next play. Mason Sharon takes it 94 yards to the house. The extra point is up, and it's no good. So Aggie misses his first extra point of the season, but nonetheless, Mason Sharon, 94 yards off the left side, and just like that, Davidson regains control, 27-17. 349 left to go in this first half.
Just when it appeared that all the momentum was on the side of Stetson after forcing that, after making the stop on fourth down. They give up, they throw an interception, and then Mason Sharon takes it 94 yards for a touchdown. Devin Brewer set to return the kickoff along with Jalen Worthen Carr. High kick. Worthen Carr has to sit at the 20. Worthen Carr has the sideline, has some blockers to the 40. And that one's led over to the 42 yard line. And uh, Nains is starting to get a little chippy down on the sideline, a little late hit. by Marcus Hurd Jr. So first and 10 for Stetson. They'll have it at their own 42 yard line. So first and 10 for Matt O'Connor and the Stetson offense. Brewer again goes out to the left. High pass, they'll say is incomplete. O'Connor has been a little bit a little bit too much juice on the last couple of passes we've seen from him. He missed on Jay Feliciano on a second and goal. That eventually cost Stetson four points as he had to settle for a field goal. And misses Brewer on the screen. Second down and 10. 336 left in his opening half. They fake the jet sweep. And O'Connor's keeper goes nowhere. Darren Kendall's. Read that one all the way, so it's third down and 10. That shall say you lost one, third and 11. Stetson today on third, Stetson today on third down. Our three, or two of two. Three of two, beg your pardon. Oh, the Feliciano of the field, first down, makes the man miss. Gets brought down at the 41 yard line. Gain of 18 on a third and nine, gain of 17 on a third and nine. And again, the Hatters inside Davidson territory. Ball got tipped. Well, that might have got tipped off the hands of Aaron Warren. So second down and 10. 229 in this first half. 27-17 Davidson. Devin Brewer on the right side. Leaps over. Hurdles over a defender. Out of bounds at the 35 yard line. Aaron Warren on the tackle. So say he goes to the 36. So it's third and four. Need to get to the 32 before I had a first down. Again, this time on target. Brewer bobbles, hangs on to it. Gets met at the first down yard sticks by, Dar by Daniel Carter. Carter get a little measure of vengeance at the Brewer. Gave him the business on that 56 yard reception in the first quarter. So it's gonna be fourth down. So it's fourth down and two. All sorts of chaos on the field. Timeout called and Scott Abel continues his 
yelling and continues his conversations with the officials. Both coaches have had plenty to be upset about in this first half of play. I think the referee is telling Coach, telling Coach Abel, I think you've had enough of you, sir, in the first half. So timeout Davidson, they have one left. Stetson has it a fourth and two at the 34-yard line. And as an official, you can only take so much from somebody yelling and screaming at you before you decide to throw a yellow, decide you before you decide to throw the flag. And it feels like this officiating crew, again, give them credit for being discretionary. I think they may have gotten to the point with Coach Abo in terms of the uh, comp one side of conversation. Fourth and two empty backfield for O'Connor. Bowles right. Has Worthen Carr. Hangs on to it. Has the first down. Needed to get to the 32. Gets to the 30 yard line. They ran that same concept down on the end, down on the far side on their opening on their second possession, which resulted in a touchdown. Pick up a first down on a fourth and two. 147 and rolling. Clock stops because of the first down and him stepping out of bounds. Again, the new two-minute timing rules in the college game. Again, they send Brewer in motion. He don't go for the screen. Feliciano gets hugged. No whistle. Omari Hill with the lockdown defense. Second and ten. And Stetson will kick to Davidson to start the third quarter. So if you're Stetson, you cannot, you cannot get three points here. You need to get a touchdown. Second and 10, all at the 30 yard line. O'Connor takes it to Brewer, has Feliciano incomplete, and O'Connor gets hit at Darren Kendall's, who, who gingerly gets up. Daniel Carter almost laid one off Feliciano. And Press the brakes at the last second. They don't want to get called for targeting, which would have meant a disqualification and him having to sit the first half of next week versus Morehead State. Third and 10 at the 30 yard line. And off Worthen Carr has a couple blocks out to the 25 yard line. And again, Worthen Carr and MJ Hurd and the head linesman is starting telling these. You can, again, the, the officials are kind of reached a point in terms of the coaches getting on them, the players chirping back at one another. Don't be surprised if you see some quick flags being thrown for anything on the sidelines after the play early in the second half to try and reestablish some control. Fourth and five, Stetson will send the field goal unit on. Hatters have to hurry up. Bush will kick. Off the hold of Bo Gaines. They get the ball off. On the way. Kick is up and the kick is good. MJ Hurd again chatting with Caleb Costner. And the umpire is telling him enough. Again, I give, the, I give these officials credit for trying to keep these players under control, but at some point you have to start throwing flags regardless on both sides to kind of get some reestablishing of control here. So Hatters kicked the field goal and it's 27 to 20 and I'm sure around the PFL, they're looking at the score in the land, they're probably in looking and probably having a raised eyebrow of what's going on here at Spec Martin Stadium. We'll recap everything before we start the second half, but we still have a minute 26 left to go here in the first half. Victor Anderson, glad that you're with us on How to Vision. We appreciate all of you watching our broadcasts on this Saturday afternoon on a gorgeous, albeit breezy afternoon in Volusia County. 
Davidson will have one timeout to work with in a minute 26 in the first half. And again, the Wildcats will have the ball to start the third quarter. Marshall Golick's kickoff will land out of bounds. So if Davidson will have it at the 35-yard line. Adam Zuagi's long this year was 50, which he had last week versus Presbyterian. Now warranted him PFL Special Teams Player of the Week honors. So for him to get to a 52-yard field goal, he'll need to get about need to get 30 yards. Davidson, something that you don't see from the Wildcats too often. Four wide. Cleveland to my own. Catches the hitch, steps out of bounds at the. Cullen's pass caught at the 43, marked at the 43 yard line. So second down and two. And this is the growth of this offense. Able to spread things out with a passer like Cleland. Has a man on a little uh, fade. That ball's caught. Brody Reyna makes a couple more men miss. He'll have the ball inside the 10 yard line. First down with 111. Brody Reyna on the sophomore from Covington, Louisiana with the reception. Gain of 50. First and goal at the seven. As we tick under one minute. Mari Adams down to the five yard line. Davidson has to hurry up, 52 seconds. Again, Davidson with one timeout remaining. That will be second and goal from the five. Adams has one touchdown on the second play of the game, a 42 yard scamper. Cleland looks for a man, he gets flushed, rolls to his right, he scrambles. Throws that one away. Great coverage by R.J. Williams and Jalen Johnson trying to go for his intended man as Max Weaver on the scramble drill. So third and five, third and goal from the five for Davidson. 29 seconds left. Four receivers each side. Watch Kellen West in the slot to the left of the screen. That was a man, that was incomplete. Went for Brody Reyna. Knocked down, and it's fourth down. Andy Pettit home. Fourth and goal. That'll bring on Adam Zuagi to kick the field goal. Will be a 22, so we 22 yard field goal. My own will hold. Michael Leonard will snap, snap down, kick up, almost blocked by Rassy Little John, but the kick is good. So Davidson picks up three. 19 seconds left to go in what has been a uh, explosive and cantankerous first half. Davidson 30, Stetson 20, and Coach Abel continues chatting things up with the officials. So Stetson defense holds after the long catch by Brody Reyna. They settle for the field goal from Adam Zuagi. See how Stetson handles this offensively with 19 seconds left. Hatters do have all three of their timeouts. But again, understanding that Davidson will start the second half with the Brock. So 
see how the kick return will def will go a long way in determining the mindset for head coach Brian Young, his play caller Norman Joseph. Suagi knocks it down. Ball hits a hatter, and Stetson will have the ball at the 43-yard line. So they try to go for a line drive and hit off one of the hit off one of the front men. And gets recovered by Chachi Perez. So Stetson will have it at the 44-yard line. Eighteen second will be forty four yard line, eighteen seconds left again. Stetson with all three timeouts. O'Connor drops back, gets hit as he throws that one is intercepted. Here could be a house call. 30, 20, 15, 10. O'Connor knocks him out of bounds at the three. A disastrous throw. O'Connor got hit as he got Throw it away, and Grant Reeder dropped into coverage, gets the interception, and Davidson with a chance to get an extra three points to end the first half. Second interception by Matt O'Connor. It looks like Davidson's gonna try and go for the jugular here. Five seconds left, first and goal at the two. Again, Davidson has one timeout left. My own in motion. Cleveland outside, my own touchdown, Davidson. So Davidson once again capitalizes off the Matt O'Connor interception. Cleveland. Tosses a two-yard touchdown strike to Aaron Myone. And now Davidson, presuming the extra point is successful, will take a 37-20 lead to the locker room. And again, say two seconds will remain in the first half. So Davidson, who comes in, who came in averaging 37, 43 and a half points per game. Will have 37 as they head into the locker room. Again, two seconds left in a half. Again, started off the interception, nearly returned for a touchdown by Grand Reader. Davidson scores on the very next play, two-yard touchdown pass from Cleveland to Aaron Myone. And it's 37-20 Davidson, two seconds left in the first half. And what has been a wild, in all senses, 30 minutes to play. We're gonna try. We're gonna try our best to dissect how this first half is go, first half went when we come back after halftime. But even then, <laughs> it's a lot to digest and not much time to do so. We certainly don't suggest going into the water or going to the pool. Or you say try and digest food. Like 30, have to wait 30 minutes after. Zuwagi will try another line dry kick to end the half, or we'll just a little squibber. Hatters don't touch it. Ball is still live. Worthen Carr will return it. This will send us to halftime. Gets corralled at the 23-yard line, and that will finally bring us to the end of the first half. Coach Abel's still talking about something. The ball got touched, the clock started. So the half comes to an end. 37 points for Davidson. 
in a wild final two minutes. We'll recap everything as best as we can as both teams head to their respective locker rooms. Your score after 30 minutes, Davidson 37, Stetson 20. We'll be back with a recap of the first half and get you set for second half action right here on Hattervision.
We welcome you back to Spec Martin Stadium. Victor Anderson with you on what has been a unexpectedly entertaining 30 minutes of play. Davidson 37, Stetson 20. Take a look at the stats of the first 30 minutes of play. Davidson outgaining Stetson 374 to 208. Davidson 245 yards on the ground. Again, they are the number one rushing team in FCS, showing you right there. Now, 136 of those yards came on two runs. The 42-yard run by Mari Adams on the second play from scrimmage. And then late in the first half, a 94-yard touchdown run by Mason Sharon. Sharon with eight carries, 138 yards, and two touchdowns in the first half. Stetson has actually won the time of possession battle versus Davidson. Had us had the ball for nearly 17 minutes to Davidson's 13. Davidson showing on some unusual lack of discipline. Davidson penalized five times for 35 yards. They came into this game one of the fewest penalized teams in FCS, averaging four and a half penalties per game. Stetson, four penalties for 20 yards. Coulter Cleland, six of nine, 129 and a touchdown. Matt O'Connor, 13 to 25, 195 yards, two touchdowns, but two critical interceptions, including one where he got hit with 18 seconds left in the first half that set up the touchdown to Aaron Myon from two yards from Cleland. Davidson with the ball to start the third quarter. Ball bobbled by West, feels it at the 13-yard line, tries to find a seam, but gets closed up quickly at the 32-yard line. And Davidson will have the ball to start quarter number three. Victor Anderson, glad that you're back with us here at Speckmar Memorial Stadium. Davidson tied with Drake. For the league lead at 5-0, both teams do not, these the two teams will not play each other in the regular season. Davidson, Davidson 35-8 and eight since 2019 where they scored at least 28 points. My own in motion, hand off to Mari Adams. There's his way forward to the 35-yard line. Mark McCurdy trying to lead the block. For Adams fell on top of him. Gain of four makes it second and six. Davidson looking for that fifth straight win versus Stetson. And a six and two mark all time versus the Hatters here in the land. Second down and six. Cleveland spreading things out. My own goes in motion from the left side. And get Adams with a wide hole, has the first down, has more, gets a block from McCurdy, springs Adams inside out of territory, steps out of bounds at the 36-yard line. Another big run for Amari Adams, her jo who joins Mason Sharon in the 100-yard club, will be very close to it. First down for Davidson. And yeah, that run will put Adams well over the century mark. Sets it allowed two 100 yard rushes last week versus Drake, and I've had that happen again today. Sam Valor with the carry. Loses the ball, but before, uh, but that was af well after for progress was stopped at the 29. Brings up second down and three. Mark McCurdy in the slot. Now on the left by the bottom of your screen is Kalen West. Had his man, had Aaron my own. A little slot, a little slot pop. But had a hatter in his face. So it was third and three at the 29. Even though we're at the start of the second half, if you're Stetson, you have to get you have to prevent Davidson from getting on the scoreboard again. My own again in motion. 
Cleveland keeps it, hands to my own, gets a blocks downfield block. We'll get the first down inside of Stetson 20, where he gets wrangled up by Davion Maxwell. So first down and 10, so that's Mark McCurdy, excuse me. So first down for Davidson. First and 10 of the 19 yard line. Davidson now three of five on third down conversions. First and 10 inside the Stetson 20. Again, McCurdy the man in motion. Fowler cuts back left. And will get greeted rudely by Andy Pettit home. Fowler lost his helmet, so he will have to come out for at least for, come out for the second down. And Mari Adams will be on the field. Second and nine. Adams lined up to the right of Cleveland. Cleveland had West try to get West on a little corner route, but he overshoots him. RJ Williams on the coverage, so it's third and nine. Davidson taking time, the opening possession of this third quarter. Wildcats up 17. Trying to deliver a knockout blow to Stetson. Trying a little screen. Hatters read it beautifully. He scrambles. Cleveland gets the first down, stretches forward, gets knocked out of bounds at the two. So first down and goal. So the Hatters read the screen, but Davidson keeps, fortunately, keeps their lineman right near the line of scrimmage. Cleveland scrambles for the first down. First and goal for Davidson at the one yard line. They've already equaled the third down conversions on this opening drive. First and goal, handoff Adams. Leaps over in the end zone. Did he break the plane? Yes, he did. Touchdown, Mari Adams. Touchdown, Davidson. Second touchdown of the afternoon for Mari Adams. So if he and Mason Sharon, each over the century mark in rushing, and each with a pair of rushing touchdowns. And Davidson will surpass their Scoring average on the season after the Adam Zuwagi extra point. And this is exactly what you feared if you were Stetson. You give up the touchdown to end the half. Davidson drives down the field to start the third quarter, marches their way down, picks up the touchdown. And now with 11 03 left to go, Davidson with a commanding 44. 20 lead over the Hatters. That opening drive for Davidson went nine plays, 69 yards. Took off three minutes and two seconds off the clock. And Davidson has scored three of the last, Davidson has scored touchdowns on three of their last four possessions after being stopped on that fourth and three Late in the second quarter. The game turned on, a Matt on the Matt O'Connor interception on the very next play. And then the next play after that, Mason Sharon broke it 94 yards for a touchdown. And it, and it was all, it has been all Davidson since then. 44-20 Wildcats. 11.03 left to go, third quarter. Victor Anderson with you from Spec Barn Stadium. So 
Loggy's kick goes into the end zone for a touchback. And the Hatters will take over at the 25 yard line. Matt O'Connor in the first half for Stetson. Had some ups and had, a lot, had some downs, but the downs came with the was in for two times. Had two interceptions in the last four minutes of the half. 13 to 25, 195 yards, two touchdowns, the aforementioned two picks, and was sacked once. Devon Brewer only had six net rushing yards in the first half, but did have five receptions for 73 yards. He's to the right of O'Connor. Here comes Worthen Carr in motion. Brewer with the handoff. Will slither his way in to the 28 yard line. Gain of three. Brings up second down and seven. Stetson three and five, one and four in conference. Got dominated last week on the road versus Drake, who's the only also undefeated in the conference. And that ball came hot out of the hands of O'Connor. Try to go to Jalen Worthen Carr. So now third and seven for Stetson. Third and seven. Hatters four of nine on third downs in the first half. Need to get to the Davison 35. O'Connor with the low snap. Had it, man. That one goes in and out of the hands of Caleb Costner. Saban McLaughlin eight on eight on the coverage. So it brings up fourth and seven. And it'll bring on the Stetson punting team. Only the second punt. for either side today. Well, the third point for Stetson today, all of them coming, two of them coming in the first half. Davidson has yet to punt in today's game. Aaron Myone back at the 35 yard line. Golick gets it off. Myone will let it bounce, and we'll roll out of bounds at the 37-yard line, they'll call it, and that's where Davidson will have possession. With 10-12 left to go here in the third quarter, Wildcats in command, 44-20. As Davidson appears on their way to go into 6-0 in the league and winning their seventh straight. One of their losses came to a Division II school, Barton College. Their two losses had come by, by a combined seven points. My own, a little slot counter, takes it upfield to the 44-yard line, and this is where Davidson really starting to flex their muscle right now. Second down and a long three. Stetson came into the Gays game, giving up 270 yards on the ground in conference play. Davidson has eclipsed that already in two quarters and a drive plus. Caught first down, first reception on the afternoon by Clarence Freeman, the fourth, senior from National City, California. 